Pastor Mace is under fire for recent comments he made. Uh, Mace said, the weakest thing a black man can do is join a gang. And the reason why I'm interested in your, uh, your take on this is because you're going to be interviewing Glasses Malone on Thursday. And uh, him and Glasses Malone were going back and forth. Glasses Malone, whom, you know, um, he, he said, uh, this comment is ridiculous. And he went on to say, Mace is effing tripping. He knows why kids join gangs. What, what are your, what's your, your um, comment on that? Well, you know what? Um, I, I won't say it's the weakest thing you can do. I definitely say it's not the smartest thing you can do. Okay. Um, it's, um, it, it, at, one, at my time, I was able to get around it. Okay. As a dad, I do my best to keep my son out of it. Okay. It's, uh, in some situations, it's, kids aren't that blessed to have somebody around that could um, steer them away from them, away from that situation or not put in that situation or not being exposed to it. Uh, I, 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 won't, I, I won't say it, I won't call it weak, but I definitely will call it unsmart in some cases. Mm -hmm. um, I, got a, I got a family member right now that's looking at life in prison and he, he didn't, he didn't pull a trigger. He didn't do anything specifically, specifically. He just was around some dudes that did, okay? Mm. And because it was a tragic situation, they wanted, they wanted as many people as they can to go to jail, okay? And he didn't do anything to cause a tragedy, but he was there. And he was associated with the guys who did, and they don't give a damn. And so that's mm. where, that's where the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the weakness part comes. You're going to get railroaded in this damn time based on your association, not your activities. Okay, mm -hmm. your activity, your the activity of being associated, but being associated is sufficient enough to get you caught up and get you a case. Yeah, that's that's the problem. That's the problem mm -hmm. that so many, most young men and most young people are facing. It's not so much your activity; it's your association. So, in an effort to try and eliminate as many folks from that position, I mean, in, in that situation. They do a they do a sweep of everybody, and if you can't figure, come up with a justifiable way and or just uh, or a good alibi or something to get you out of that, or somebody says the wrong thing and puts you in the wrong place at the wrong time, you'll find yourself in just as deep of trouble as the people who actually pulled the trigger or actually committed the crime. And that's the part that makes it real real hard to deal with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's so, crazy, man. Yeah, and the older I get, I just stay. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna talk. I'm, I'm looking forward to talking to Glasses Balone. I met I met Glasses Balone mm -hmm. twice. I don't really know him. I'm looking forward to meeting him. He hit me up. Hey, man, check out my my uh, my music. And I told him I said you do my interview. We'll talk about your music. And come to find out, he's a friend of another one of my friends. Um, mm -hmm. They know each other through some other stuff. And the guy asked him, hey, "Man, you know Lonzo? Lonzo's one of my best friends." Okay. So that's how we talked on the phone one yeah. time. I told him I want to interview him. So that's how we're doing this. With some old that's school, dope. touching with some new school. Yeah, yeah. And he's a very intelligent brother, man. So I'm really looking forward to this conversation that you guys are going to have. Right. Yeah, this dude's been, he, he's been doing it on the underground for, for a minute, you know, and the whole independent thing. And His name been ringing bells around me for a minute, man. I, 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 I said, I met him, but Warren G introduced us one time. Uh, we were all doing an event over at Watts at the Watts Healthcare Center. And I was able to meet him. Hey, OG, I heard a lot about you, man. I'd like to talk to you sometime, blah, blah, blah. And we exchanged number then. And then uh, my partner uh, reiterated, hey, man, I heard my boy said he wanted to talk to you. Here he is on the phone. So that's how we connected. And so, uh, this will be our first, this will be our actual yeah. first uh, real conversation, man. So I'm looking forward to having it. That's dope as hell. Make sure you hit record. Please, please, please. Even if you gotta <laughs> have me, even if you gotta have me there off mic just to make sure. <laughs> please. But no, this dude, um, he he he's he 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 makes really good music as well. He went viral uh, a couple of years back. And maybe you can ask him about this as well. I would love his perspective. But he wrote a song called I Kill Tupac. And it was uh, he wrote the song as the perspective of the person who actually killed Tupac that night in 1996, okay. released a video and everything. And, and a lot of Tupac fans and a lot of Tupac's close, you know, people didn't really feel the song. But when you hear him discuss, you know, why he made the song, it, it makes a lot of sense. So, yeah, try to ask him about that as well. I might have you come on with me, man, and help me kind of co-host the show. 
I would I would love to. That would be my I'll, honor, I'll, and I'll, I'll let you do. I'll, I'll, you you do most of the talking. If I if I'll I think sh- of anything, I'll, I'll shoot it. Your uh, you know, uh, it's a Tupac must die. Uh, yeah, Tupac that? must die. That's what it's called. Tupac must die. Not I kill Tupac. Tupac okay, must yeah, die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, yeah, now, look, yeah you, I would love you to. Have to be, you have to be accurate on my site, man. Because I got some serious people on here. They will correct your yeah. ass in a minute. I they know. are serious about their <laughs> hip hop history. They they know all the details. So uh, keep it one hundred. Yeah, Doc, I might just I, do that, man. Because okay, I would love so, to have well, you um, fill in the blanks on some things. I I beautiful. don't claim to know everything about uh, hip hop, but some cool. generations I know nothing about, or I have limited limited knowledge on. And I always want to bring my folks the best possible show. So cool. you may have to call us. So honored. We'll talk about it offline. Cool. Very cool. You and you're right you about your it. audience, man. I, I I see them correcting you on shit that you said yeah. and you were there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, nigga, wait a minute. I, <laughs> I was Paul. I was the one that lit Paul Revere's goddamn man. And when he crossed me, he said, the British are coming. How you going to tell me what kind of matches I use? Shit. <laughs> no, I was thinking the other Love night, it. man. I was thinking the other night. Um... Uh, you know, I, I got kind of bugged. This young lady, she's telling me about what I didn't do, what I didn't do, and it kind of mm-hmm. bugged me because uh, you don't you don't know. And I, I if, if I take hip hop and put it in perspective like a movie mm-hmm. or a record, in in a record there are certain parts. There's pre production, there's production and post production. When it came to West Coast hip hop. I was on the I was in the pre-production and the production mm-hmm. stage. Level. So mm-hmm. the pre-production parts you don't see. Okay, you don't see all the work that goes into something before it actually hits the stage. You don't yep. see the planning stages. You don't see the building of the sets. You don't see the installation of the sound system at the theater. When a when a on a, when a play is on the stage, all you see is the actors and what the actors are doing to bring bring that what the writer and the producer and everybody has put together. When you see the overall production, the lighting, the lighting guys, and the sound men, and the grips, you don't see you, you don't see them get awards for doing that. But when you got certain people that wore all those hats, and then the people on stage get all the accolades, it's it's kind of um, it's like it's like the cook. The cook cooks the food, make it taste good, but you tip the waitress, mm-hmm. okay? Exactly. <laughs> you tip the waitress, okay? Yeah. All she did was she delivered the shit. The man in the back is what made it taste good, okay? Yep. You paying the wages for the service, but the cook is why you keep coming back, okay? Mm-hmm. Now, I, I, I never worked in uh, restaurants before. I don't know if the cook gets a piece of the tips or not, but that's the person you need to be tipping, I especially agree. if they deliver the food for you the way you want it done and don't spit in it, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody deliver you a spit-free steak, you want to be happy as hell. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, man, that's that's real talk. People don't see the, you know, they only see Kobe Bryant go out and make forty five points a night. They don't see Kobe Bryant take do ten thousand free throws, you know, right. every night. You know, they don't see that. That's why I kind of trip when people. I, I don't like when people use the term, oh, he was an overnight success, or oh, he came out of nowhere. No, you didn't see the the hours of him setting up shop and making inter- trying to get interviews and and doing the show, driving there, breaking down putting his equipment up, breaking his equipment down, just like you did back in the day. You had to put, you had to put all your equipment up, take it down, put it up. It was like, didn't you like have to do like four times if you if you, you added it up? You move a one-bedroom apartment four times in one night and you're doing a mobile party. That's crazy, man. And you're doing it four times with no break. You get to the venue, you load it, unload it to the venue, do the show, load it back in the thing, unload it when you get to the house because you dare not leave your stuff in the truck. Is your truck and everything you own. One of my buddies did that shit and he lost everything. Ooh. Okay. He was too lazy. He thought he was cool. He said, oh, man, that's my neighborhood. No, 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 no. Somebody watching your ass. Okay. They stole mm-hmm. everything he got. Every piece of every speaker, every cable he had was in that truck and it, it came up missing. So you don't, you don't leave your stuff. If they want your stuff, they got to come in the house and get it. Man, okay. Dude. And uh, so, yeah, when you're out there and do. I don't, well, nowadays, I, I, I envy DJs nowadays because they bring laptops. They don't even bring, you know, most of them don't even bring controllers anymore. They just bring a laptop mm-hmm. and get yeah. more money, <laughs> you know, get a shitload of money. But back in the yep. day, you had to earn your money. It's a big difference. Mm-hmm. Big difference. Crates of records. Crates of records. We're talking records, records, not, you know, everything on one laptop, like you said. Right. Okay. Uh, one of my buddies, uh, 
class one think he was moving to something. He had to put his records in storage and he showed a mountain of records. A mountain. Oh. Every crate weighs about 50 pounds. A crate of record weighs about 50 pounds. Okay. And you live, you move about 50 of them. Back in the day, if you didn't carry, you had to probably carry about eight to ten crates just to just to be uh uh remotely um flexible in your playlist. Okay. You're only gonna play sixty. You're only gonna play sixty-five songs mm-hmm. in a five-hour period. I count. I've counted them several times. In five hours, ninety-two. You go. If you play every song differently, you'll play fifty-five songs. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's not. That's not. That's not mixing. That's not stretching out to mix. But if you're just playing songs, like a regular DJ, you're playing fifty-five songs. Mm. Okay. But you got to carry two or three hundred. Just to make sure you can pick the right 65 for that evening. Damn, dude. That's crazy. Man, yeah, these kids don't know how good they have it. Man, we were talking about that today. Me and my buddy on that went to the <laughs> golf court. He said, man, he was talking about his son. He said, if half ass was a uh was, was a check, you'd be a well-paid son of a gun. I said, Do you realize <laughs> how much trauma I woke up in my sleep as a grown man dreaming I got my ass whooped? Okay, but I woke, you know. Back in the day, if you didn't do enough, do something before you went to bed, you'd get your ass whooped. Mm-hmm. You'd wake up to an ass you wake whooping. Up to an, yeah, exactly. <laughs> wake up to an ass whooping. That's some traumatizing shit, man. Mm-hmm. That's some, P, that's some PTA, P, PTSD causing PTSD. shit. Yeah. That's some PTSD causing shit to go to bed thinking everything is straight and wake up to somebody beating your ass, okay? And mm-hmm. that's what we had to deal with as kids. If you didn't wash the dishes properly, and which means, which in my house, when I was a kid, been wash them, dry them, put them in the cabinet, dump, dump the trash, mop the floor, wipe down the cabinets, wipe down the stove. Okay, all that had to be done for for the kitchen to be considered clean. At my house, uh-huh. they wash the dishes and throw them in the, the little dryer hamper, and they sit there, and people pull them for the for the next time they start pulling. So all they do is go from the dryer. The, the mm-hmm. dry hamper back into the sink again. Yeah, and, and, and then you got to almost kick ass to get the trash. My oh, come on, don't, don't get me started, dude. Yeah, oh, man, man. But it to, I told him, I said, y'all gonna survive, my old man. Mom, he's a good dude. He to fuck you up. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom the same. Five foot, nothing, and and to this day, I'm scared of her because yeah, she would whoop my ass, man. Like, and she would <laughs> wait till I get out of the bath. Like, she would. They, they they had their times where they would be like, okay, this is gonna hurt more. Let me wait till he gets his ass out of the bathtub. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, you you, you whistling, drive your ass. I'm making another pair across your wet ass. Okay, 